Let's look carefully at our friend from before A bright scientist whose name was Niels Bohr He said there were levels where electrons rise and fall But now we know that that's not all He's actually talking about principal energy levels But don't freak out, don't get your hair disheveled It's represented by the principal quantum number N Which equals the period number of the atom it's in If this electron was the last to go in But it only tells you how far away from the nucleus one electron probably is Every primary energy level has many sublevels from within How many will n minus 1 is the maximum The sublevels given by the secondary quantum number L The numbering starts at 0 Isn't that swell? Each sublevel has a shape of its own And the max number of electrons it can hold Electrons first fill a sublevel which could hold 2 Then the P sublevel which can hold 6 for you Followed by D which can hold 10 for me Finally, the F which can hold 14 atoms with their last electron added to each sublevel are grouped on the periodic table where they revel. Sublevels within primaries must be filled in order, but moving on to another primary won't cause disorder. Each sublevel is made of orbitals. If you want to find the orbital orientation of an electron, you don't have to stumble. You can easily find the magnetic quantum number. A max of two electrons each orbital can hold. And according to Hunt's rule, they first go to one that's unfilled. Two electrons sharing an orbital they must have. The two spin quantum numbers plus half and negative half. If an electron by itself all alone, then for the substance of the electron, magnetism shown. This stuff is interesting and truly is quite fun. But what is the electron actually doing in the atom? De was a man, 1923. Get an idea of what this could possibly be. We all know waves can act as particles, but wouldn't it be quite a spectacle if you took a sentence and read it the other way that in an atom electrons can also act as waves then a guy named Schrodinger further some more and added some quantum flow he began to describe basic electronic movement he said since electronic wavelength had to be whole numbers they can only hold certain quantum of energy in their bumpers and this last point may sadden so don't scream at me there's a limit to our certainty of an electron's position and velocity as you get more precise in the measurement of one you'll see the preciseness of the other is bound to decrease all we can know is electronic probability density the chance of an electron in a certain place will be and this is called the heisenberg uncertainty principle by you and me